Welcome back to another video in our series, uh, Making 2D Games in Unity. In this video, we're going to continue looking at some enemy AI behaviors. In particular, we're going to be looking in this video at using a melee attack. So when our player gets close enough to our spider here in the scene, the spider will then try to bite him, give him a little melee attack. So we're going to go into uh, our script here in just a second. So we have our spider here. He's got his spider AI script. And if we look at that, there's a few things in here from when we did patrolling the other day. So just kind of ignore those uh, and chasing uh, and just look for the new things here. Uh, but what we're going to need to do is the spider is going to need to know um, what his attack range is. So how far away. Uh, or how close does the player have to get before he can reach him and bite him. And he's also going to have to know how much damage that he'll do with his bite. And then we also need to tell him how often he can bite the player. So we're going to need a few variables up here to make our melee attacking work. So first of all, let's do a, yeah, we'll give it a public float. We'll call it attack range. And then let's, uh, we're going to need um, the damage. So we'll need a public integer, and we'll call this damage. And then uh, let's put in uh, a way to remember the last time that the enemy attacked. So again, that'll be a pub, actually that can be private. We don't need to see that in the inspector. Last attack time. Oh, and we got to give that a type here. This again will be a float. And then finally we need to be able to, to um, have an attack delay. So how long in seconds should he delay between attacks? So we'll do a public float and this will be attack delay. So how much time should he delay between attacks? So those are the four variables we're going to need. Then down here in our update function we're going to use those variables to make our attack happen. So the first step in attacking here is knowing if we are within range of attacking. So we have to know how if we're close enough to be bitten here. So the spider is going to check the distance uh, between himself and the player. To see if um, the player is close enough to attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to declare a temporary float variable here. This is going to be called our um, distance to player. And we're going to set that equal to a vector 3 dot distance. Vector 3 dot distance is a very handy built-in function that allows us to give two points uh, in our game here and it will tell us as a float the number of unity units in between those two. So we're going to give it our spider's transform position and then our player here is known as target and here we still have this public transform target that holds the range to the or that actually holds the uh, player. So we're going to get our target dot position. So that will get us the number of units that we are away from the player. Now that we have that, we can see if we are close enough. So now we can check that if distance to player is less than our attack range. If that is true, then we are close enough to be able to reach the player and cause him some damage. So then what we will do is we will um, send a message to our player. So target dot send message. And we already set this up in a uh, previous video for us to be able to send a message to our uh, to, to objects to cause some damage. And we're using the take damage as our name. And then we will send the amount of damage that we want 
to send. Okay, and then after we uh, cause the damage, we want to make sure we record that we just attacked, so that we will not attack uh, again until it's time um, to do so. All right, and then we have to actually put that in. So we also want to record the time we attacked. So that's going to be last attack time equals time dot time. Time dot time gives me the actual time on the game clock right now at this instance in the game. What time is it? And so we're going to record that. Now we need to tie this in up here because not only do we need to be close enough to the player to attack, but then we actually have to make sure that enough time has passed since the last time we attacked to attack him. So let's go ahead and drop in um, another if statement here and this one will be uh, for us to check to see if enough time has passed since we last attacked. So otherwise we'd attack him every frame and he'd be dead in no time. So we want to get make it a little more fair for our player here. So we'll say if last attack time plus, actually let's do this the other way. Let's say if time dot time, that's the current time in the game clock, if that is greater than the last attack time plus our attack delay. So last attack time is the last time we attacked on the game clock's time. And we're going to add into that the attack delay. That's how many seconds we want to wait in between attacks. And if that added together uh, is less than this, so if time that time has gotten past that point, then we know it's time to attack again. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and just enclose all of this in these curly brackets. So we only do the attack if enough time has passed. Uh, and then we're good to go. So we're, we're every frame checking distance to the player. If we are close enough, uh, and that shouldn't be attack delay there. There's another mistake. This is a attack range. So hopefully you caught that error there. Uh, if distance to player is less than our attack range, then we check to see if time dot time is greater than the last attack time plus attack delay. Then we go ahead and tell our player here, hey, take damage. And we send up the amount of damage that the spider does. And then we record that last attack time. Okay, so that is the basics of how to do a melee style attack. Now, um, let's go check and make sure that our player in one of his scripts has uh, this take damage. So I'm using the top down player movement script on the skeleton here. So he does have health. So make sure that the object you're trying to damage has some sort of a health variable. Let's keep track of how many health points they have. And then make sure you've got a public void take damage function that brings in an integer amount of damage to do. And we just subtract that from health, check to see if we're alive or dead. And right now I just have it giving us a debug.log if we die uh, so that we can see that that's happening. Okay, so that's the other half. You need this take damage function here so that you can actually damage the player. All right, so let's go back to our spider AI script, make sure it's all saved up, and then let's go out and test this out. So the spider has uh, all his new variables here. He's got his target already. Uh, we've got a chase range. We're not doing chase right now on this. I disabled that. But let's give him an attack range of one unit. So we have to get pretty close to him before he can attack us. Let's give him a damage of two. And let's say he can bite us once per second. So remember, this attack delay is in seconds. Uh, let's click in on our skeleton player here and make sure in his script he's got some health. So he's got 10 health right here. Okay, so let's test this out. As uh, I play it and I walk up next to the spider, uh, when I get within range, we should see my health drop down. We should only have it about once per second. So let me walk up to the spider here. And there, he bit me. Bit. So about once per second, I'm taking a bite, and now it's telling me that I'm dead because my health has actually gone negative. Okay, if I walk away out of range, you'll notice that health stopped dropping down. So that is um, how you can do a melee attack, a very simple way. So if you want to uh, be a little more accurate with the attacking, 
you could use the same idea that we used when we did the melee uh, attacking interaction in the video we did earlier where we use the overlap circle to define an area that we're checking to see if anything is within it and so what that would look like is after we made sure that it was time to attack again we could do that overlap circle command uh, and then we could loop through all the things that we hit to see if the the target was one of those and if so then we could do damage that would allow us to maybe get up behind the spider and attack him without him being able to attack us as it is right now if I get within one unit from any side of the spider he will attack me so um, you can you can combine that idea in there if you like but if you just want a real simple if you get close to this object that's going to hit you and you want to control how often it does that damage then this works just fine okay so I think that's enough for this video a little shorter one on how to do uh, enemy AI attacking with a melee style attack we'll do another video here on how to do ranged attacking with an enemy where the enemy is aware of where the player is and can shoot at the position that the player is currently at uh, we'll do that in the next video hope you found this helpful thanks for watching